the first question is uh, what percentage of uh, retro versus modern gaming do you do annually? Uh, well, normally for me, uh, taking into consideration that uh, most of my time uh, I play uh, on the PC, I definitely say that uh, retro games have been uh, on the sideline. It's just a brief diversion, sort of uh, timeout be between my lengthier PC gaming sessions. My involvement with uh, retro gaming is a very recent thing. I've been uh, watching people over on YouTube show showcasing their systems and uh, collections of games uh, for the past year. And um, I've seen them uh, exclaiming the virtues of old school games and express their passion on uh, previous game uh, previous gen consoles and they're well known but also many of the more obscure old games that I that I've never known uh, I don't like uh, I don't feel uh, like I'm uh, looking uh, to be a part uh, looking for inclusion in any kind of uh, retro community personally I just want to reach out and interact with uh, with people with uh, individuals uh, people that I like and uh, have some common ground with, learn as much as I can from them and uh, possibly give back an alternative perspective of things, uh, possibly help them in any way that I can or just engage in, uh, you know, a meaningful uh, conversation. Uh, you know, in the future I'd like to strike a balance between uh, retro and modern gaming, but uh, ultimately I want to move past this uh, um, this distinction which uh, seems a bit uh, arbitrary to me personally. I feel like uh, gaming is uh, described better th as uh, uh, plain gaming without any additional uh, you know, designations. When I pick up a game, whether that's an 80s or 90s arcade classic or a contemporary title running on modern systems, I still feel the same level of enjoyment. It's all about living um, the present moment and uh, deriving the same level of uh, joy and amusement regardless of the uh, technical aspects of the game. I can appreciate a game running on a black and white lower screen uh, the same way that I like to play on huge uh, high-def displays on uh, modern computers. Now, having said that, uh, there are two very important factors that increase my involvement with uh, retro gaming. The first reason is that uh, retro games, especially the... Um, action arcade titles on consoles are uh, very easy to pick up. Uh, they are uh, simple to control, straightforward, and you don't have to ride a steep learning curve to familiarize yourself with them. Um, in many instances, um, when I just want to relax and uh, play for a few minutes, I just uh, race a few laps on uh, Forza. I would try to uh, beat a high score on some, uh, you know, older arcade shooter or something similar. And uh, action retro games are ideal for this uh, sort of uh, quick burst. Or uh, if you like uh, fast food like gaming. Uh, yeah, I could uh, compare retro gaming to fast food. You know, it's uh, they are both delicious. Uh, they are great for a quick bite, but at least as I'm as, as far as I'm concerned, if uh, too much of uh, of it will uh, not be good for your gaming health, in uh, practical as uh, well as uh, psychological uh, terms. I think it's just um, sort of bad to limit um, myself um, in one specific era of gaming. I, I just can't spend all of my time uh, either on on uh, old or uh, new games. Both worlds have uh, their strong uh, appeal, and I would be mad to turn my back on the uh, wonderful, technically astounding modern games with their uh, breathtaking visuals and their cinematic stories. And besides that, spending too much time with uh, old games, uh, it just might cause a strange and an uncomfortable feeling of detachment from current developments. Playing with uh, old games brings back a certain degree memories from uh, past experiences as well uh, and as with everything else in nostalgia is a double-edged sword uh, it can evoke uh, fond, uh, fond past memories but also it can trigger uh, recollections of uh, past events in your life that are traumatizing 
and sad and uh, the last thing I'd like to do is uh, turn this particular aspect of my gaming into a, a constant trap of association with um, unpleasant and uh, bitter past memories. Uh, the second question is, uh, what's your favorite genre of uh, games, past and uh, present? Mm. Yeah, without any doubt, uh, without any doubt, uh, the most beloved and uh, uh, I would say cherished genre of games uh, from my early gaming days uh, were the graphic adventures during the late 80s. Up until I discovered uh, adventure games, I thought it was uh, all about arcade action shooters, uh, platformers, with a few racing and sports games here and there. Uh, when my first PC came uh, bundled with a pack of floppy disks, the most exciting game of the lot was perhaps the Defender or Pongo. Uh, we're talking about uh, Atari 2600 level of sophistication, of sophistication here. But uh, the day I got a copy of this incredible game called Police Quest, everything changed. For the first time, I really appreciated my computer for its ability to, to be um, uh, the gateway into exciting, undiscovered worlds, uh, almost interactive movies in which I was the main character, and uh, I was holding the key of solving uh, whatever mystery lied ahead. Um, up until that moment, I sort of hated my black, white, black and white uh, PC. It was uh, with its, you know, d depressing lack of colors and uh, its abysmal sound quality, which was uh, relegated to a mere uh, buzzing from a uh, cheap internal speaker. But uh, with Police Quest and uh, you know all of the rest, uh, Sierra Adventures, and later on, of course, the more advanced Lucasfilm games, it felt like the gaming horizons expanded exactly into what I've been dreaming all along, you know, escaping into another reality, diving into new worlds of imagination and wonder. And, um, you know, I have to uh, say this little anecdote here. It's, uh, it's as good as time as ever. Um, I will never forget uh, this particular moment in Police Quest. It was a an instance in the early stages of the game where you you are a patrolling officer, you drive around in your patrol car and you um, at a certain point you come across a, a red corvette driven by uh, by a brunette well at least that that's what uh, the game uh, told me in one of its uh, text boxes because all I could see was in my grayscale monitor it was uh, another rectangle that was supposed to depict a car like uh, the rectangle that I was controlling in a slightly different shade of grey. Uh, anyways, uh, when I finally got to the, the car to pull over, the screen paused for a couple of seconds and then it turned into a close-up of a pixelated brunette <laughs> and I was stunned as a young boy. I never before had a um, had I ever seen a full screen like lifelike representation of a person in a computer game and uh, on top of that the pixelated woman blinked her eyes it was a very simplistic and crude animation and uh, but I was blown away I rushed into the kitchen grabbed my mom from the hand and showed her the amazing animated image of the person inside my computer and uh, it felt like uh, I, I thought to myself, wow, this is how Christopher, Christopher Columbus must have felt when he discovered America or something. Um, uh, my appreciation of um, uh, the, 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 these adventures um, gave me a good appreciation for uh, good story-driven games. But uh, this never detracted me from uh, other kinds of games, especially strategic titles, sports games, or uh, even uh, sandbox games with no, um, uh, you know, with no storyline. You know, I remember spending countless hours managing my basketball team and uh, grinding my way to the championship in uh, TV sports basketball, which was. Um, uh, the first uh, really good uh, basketball uh, title that I've ever played. 
and uh, I actually spent uh, so many hours leading my armies against hordes of enemies in games like uh, The Ancient Art of War, which was the first ever strategy game that I've ever played. Um, you know, strategy strategy games would uh, evolve to be uh, one of my favorite genre over the years, spanning over two decades of involvement with uh, titles like uh, Dune 2, Commander and Conqueror, Starcraft, XCOM, The Master of Orion, uh, or the uh, later ones, uh, the Total War series, Supreme Commander, and so on. And uh, certainly I would uh, be remiss if I didn't mention the countless hours I spent building cities in uh, SimCity uh, and then importing uh, the cities that I built in another great uh, 3D game, uh, SimCopter, flying around the city in a helicopter and um, or roaming the seas with uh, in uh, Pirates, the classic uh, old PC title, or of course, of course, exploring the galaxy in Elite. Um, so the third question: um, What are your biggest concerns or fears for the gaming future? Well, I don't have any fear about gaming. There's nothing that would scare me away or uh, stop me for, uh, from enjoying gaming in the future. Uh, I'm sure that there are so many people uh, involved in the gaming industry that there will always be uh, a never-ending, uh, you know, uh, mm, continuation, uh, surge of uh, wonderful new games, new concepts, uh, you know, new ideas, new exciting stories new technical achievements, new breakthroughs in uh, artificial uh, intelligence and, uh, you know, visual fidelity that will uh, produce amazing results. Um, of course, now, due to the proliferation of social media and the endless voices that uh, constantly bitch and moan, bitch and moan about uh, literally every single petty and insignificant reason you can possibly think of, there always there will always be you know problems and i'm air quoting here problems out there uh, you know i'm sick and tired of the level of uh, bitterness and uh, snarky commentary sarcasm and resentment that's been going on around uh, in social media mixed with a good measure of elitism from many people uh, you know, uh, people are saying things like, oh, I've paid 60 bucks for this game, and it's a broken piece of shit. Oh, this game has too many DLCs. There are too many microtransactions. Or, uh, this game is too sexist. This game is too violent. Uh, oh my god. What bloated sense of entitlement do these, uh, People have this uh, navel, uh, navel-gazing character, so sanctimonious and uh, self-centered. Uh, shut up! You have thousands upon thousands of games to enjoy at a time when other people, millions if not billions, in other parts of the world, have nothing. They die like uh, insects of war, of poverty, of uh, hunger. Nobody's gonna die if you cannot play your uh, XYZ games uh, um, lower than uh, 60 FPS, or you, if, you, if you don't like the way your assault rifle sounds like in the uh, you know, latest Call of Duty. Jesus Christ. Um, uh, you know, there are other things, but I'm not really concerned about, uh, you know, digital distribution or lack of physical copies or uh, any other such thing. And uh, the reason is simple, you know, hacking. Yeah, hackers. And uh, as uh, Highlander pointed out, the open source community, um, there w they will always be around to... And, uh, uh, they will be able to find solutions and uh, revive systems that are uh, no longer supported by the the companies or the the services have been uh, terminated through various methods uh, through emulation private service 
servers or uh, reverse engineering or what have you mm. or any other kind of uh, unofficial method the games of the past will always find their way into the systems of the future so I'm not worrying about worried about that mm. I'm quite positive that someday we'll be able to squeeze the entire collection of, uh, let's say, a PS3 into a flash drive of the future or whatever shape or form the storage media of the future will be like. And uh, just like we can cram entire libraries of old consoles into just uh, one uh, microscopic SD memory card. Now I want to uh, make um, another point here. Uh, in the long term, so um, I do see in the horizon um, a very serious problem arising for society in large, not just for gamers, um, and it will probably manifest itself uh, maybe in my lifetime. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think it will evolve to be a major concern for the humankind after the the middle of this century and uh, this potential problem has to do with virtual reality you know as virtual reality becomes more and more lifelike and believable uh, there will be a certain point when the the worlds we experience in the virtual domain will be indistinguishable for the from the real and um, you know this development is uh, unavoidable because uh, technology is uh, constantly progressing and uh, if there are people um, who are who are already addicted to games and uh, virtual identities today imagine just imagine the level of uh, dependence and attachment to more sophisticated uh, types of uh, uh, VR technologies um, you know, on this topic, there are already many um, articles and scientific treatises on this matter, and uh, there is plenty of literature and uh, movies uh, filled with stories of uh, for such a predicament. You know, the Matrix uh, being perhaps the most well-known example, and um, I could uh, direct you to another uh, example of this. Uh, a very nice uh, sci-fi short film about the psychological and social consequences of uh, VR addiction called uh, The Uncanny Valley. And uh, also, there, uh, I remember there's a, a good movie on this uh, subject called Avalon. I think it was uh, a Polish, Polish production um, produced in uh, shot in uh, 2001. You know, I'll have the links down below for anyone who you know, wishes to take a look. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah, let's face it. If you were to live inside a, a, a virtual world, and I'm not saying anything new here. This uh, thing has been already discussed to, to death. Um, if you were inside a virtual world where you could... Uh, get to experience the exact same sensations as in the actual world at the level where uh, your senses and your brain would be unable to tell the difference between the actual and the virtual i mean what would you what would be real to you what would you rather experience every day you know um waking up every day in your normal life um, possibly having to commute to a downtown office, stuck in uh, in traffic, uh, you know, surrounded by people in work you hate, uh, stuck in a menial job, having to meet the needs of your boss, your uh, snarky co-workers, and uh, then come back to a home with um, a complaining uh, spouse. Uh, uh, your uh, your nagging kids, uh, your uh, dismissive relatives, or you you could have the choice to live in a world where you can be God, 
with every pleasure you can possibly imagine at your disposal simply by thinking about it. So, uh, yeah, I have absolutely nothing to be concerned about in the short run. You know, sure, yeah, unfinished games, huge downloadable patches, same old, same old complaints about modern games, you know. But all these are, are fixable. For every shitty game out there, there are dozens of excellent ones. Mm, but on the long run, as I've said, virtual reality um, has the potential to be something uh, wonderful, but at the same time, uh, it has the destructive potential to ruin the lives of many, many people. And um, if you think about it in a more philosophical way, um, if as a human species, we decide to indulge ourselves in a virtual reality of uh, a hedonistic of hedonistic pleasures, then that will be game over for civilization. It will be game over for uh, exploration. No more ambition to reach for the stars. No nothing. Um, if there is no more incentive for a person to strive for. Uh, excellence, distinction and recognition through their work, then uh, where is the programs, the progress uh, going to come for, uh, from? Yeah, so that uh, covers this question. Uh, let's go to the fourth one. Where do you see your gaming collection in five years or more? Ah, uh, you know, yeah. Din, uh, Din knows his stuff because um, five years is a good time frame to think about your, you know, your next moves and uh, decisions into your, uh, uh, let's say, collection strategies. Okay, it's not so dramatic, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Personally, I don't have a set goal. For example, I see many people trying to complete a collection of, let's say, um, all the Sega Genesis cards that were pre published in the US. You know, I don't have that sort of ambition. Um, I have some short-term term goals of uh, specific franchises I would like to complete. For example, I'd like to collect uh, all or most of the Metroid games, even if I don't have the systems to play them on. And uh, as many fighting games as I can, I've recently discovered some uh, good franchises that I didn't know of, like Guilty Gear. But, uh, you know, that's not a really pressing priority. Um, uh, the, this uh, this time of year I'm, uh, I'm getting some uh, systems. Uh, by the end of this week I will probably get uh, uh, my hands on uh, the Nintendo Entertainment System. It's an iconi iconic machine that I would love to, to have and also a Mega Drive and um, um, I will not be uh, collecting any games for them I will probably get a Never Drive and uh, be done with it and some of these systems uh, like the, the these old uh, vintage systems like the Commodore VIC-20 that I got recently um, I of course I I want it will there will not be uh, uh, my main focus I just want them uh, you know some kind some uh, iconic machines of uh, you know sentimental and uh, historic value to uh, sort of um, adorn the shelves of my gaming room you know whenever I decide to make one that is because uh, the house is in a state uh, a permanent state of uh, mess. And um, uh, let's just leave it at that about this. But uh, um, yeah, I'd rather collect a few pieces of hardware that, that I like. And uh, I've already begun this. And uh, until the end of the year, I will have completed a, you know, a short list of vintage computers and uh, consoles I have uh, always wanted to, to buy. But... Uh, um, I couldn't afford when I was, uh, you know, uh, a kid. Uh, but uh, just the basics: uh, Commodore, Amigas, a few, 
vintage pieces, not, nothing exotic or uh, rare. Maybe a Spectrum one or an Amstrad uh, CPC. Uh, so, yeah. And I think it's the final question now. What are you looking forward to? to uh, what are you looking forward to the most with uh, game development in the future? Yeah. <clears throat> well, I am. Uh, I'm always excited to see new developments in emulation. For example, um, my current PC can uh, easily emulate at full speed and without any hitch. Uh, most of uh, the uh, the Nintendo Wii and uh, PlayStation 2 games and in some cases uh, it can actually improve the visuals by um, adding more polygons and uh, uh, increasing the you know the resolution I am happy to discover all the the new ways that uh, modern technology can be utilized to facilitate the the usage of all systems a couple of years ago, before starting to be uh, curious about retro systems, I had no idea you could uh, do things like uh, emulating uh, tapes, uh, floppy disks, uh, that you can uh, mix old and with new tech, uh, you know, from the simplest thing, such as uh, using an uh, MP3 player to download software on uh, an 8 bit uh, computer. Um, up to the most uh, technically advanced devices, for example, like the Turbo Chameleon, uh, which is a fully fledged uh, computer in the form of a common uh, C64 cartridge, with, with but with uh, uh, a fully programmable uh, uh, circuit. Um, you know, I don't really care about, uh, you know, if you mean by development in the console scene. Uh, of, okay, some of this stuff I just uh, cover as news bits for my blog in Greek, but um, all this thing about, you know, the, the new PlayStation 4 Neo, you know, with uh, 4K, uh, 4K capabilities, uh, you know, the recent announcement of uh, cross-playing between consoles, okay, that, that's all great, but... I just don't care, you know. I haven't even bought an Xbox One or a PS4. For me, it's w wasted money. I'm not. I'm not gonna pay. I'm not gonna dish out, you know, six hundred bucks just to to play the new Forza um, or the new Uncharted. Uh, although sometimes I am tempted to, when I see this, uh, there's a special edition. Uh, Forza with uh, you know uh, racing blue colors. Well, that that uh, that's tempting, but um, yeah, I'm firmly uh, attached to my decision not to uh, get any of the uh, current gen uh, consoles. Mm. My PC can do this, wh wh whatever they do, and much more. Thank you very much. Uh, but most of all, I'm. You know, the thing that I'm super excited about is all the new dev developments in uh, virtual and augmented reality, especially in... Uh, actually, I'm more inclined to experience the uh, augmented reality. I mean, uh, you know, having computer-generated graphics injected uh, in a seamless way and combined with uh, the visual perception of the real world. Um, I don't want to jump into, into VR just yet, uh, and not until the initial problems have been ironed down and uh, the systems become uh, more affordable. And uh, from the looks of it, I think I'm going to pass on the Oculus Rift altogether and go for the HTC Vive, uh, which I think is uh, I, it's closely tied to Valve and uh, Steam. And the, um, I think to I think all, I also think that it's uh, uh, a little bit uh, technically superior to the the Rift. Um, and ju just the sheer thought that I will soon be able to uh, experience a little dangerous in uh, VR with the the HTC Vive, ooh, that just uh, increases my anticipation. Um. So there you have it. 
there were my five answers to Dean Thompson. Dean hanging their brother, don't do anything stupid, get well soon. And I'm sure there will be plenty of time for, you know, fun and new discoveries in the future and uh, all this jazz. Uh, you know, we all have our troubles. You had your surgery. I have to eat steam boiled carrots and zucchinis every day to lose some weight, okay? It's tough, you know. I don't like veggies. Who in the right mind likes veggies? Only weirdos, yeah? Veggies, for Christ's sake. But I, I gotta eat them. I gotta eat them or, or else my poor heart will eventually give up on me. <laughs> yeah, so everybody's got a cross to bear. Yeah. But I say always look on the bright side of life. Always look on the light side of life. If life seems jolly rotten, there's something you've forgotten. And that's to laugh and smile and dance and sing. When you're feeling in the dumps, don't be silly chumps. Just purse your lips and whistle, that's the thing.